Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through and reviewing Fedora 30 Workstation. We'll first explore its contents and everything that it has to offer with its default desktop environment and then I'll go through and give it ratings. If you are new and stopping by to watch a review today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more reviews. I'm kinda just going through here right now and uh, exploring what they got to offer. This is the live version right now. I'm just trying to go ahead and get a feel for it before I really uh, get into things. My first impressions are that it uh, has the feel and look of Debian or Ubuntu since it uses the GNOME desktop environment as its default environment. The desktop is very minimal as you can see it's not cluttered at all. It doesn't really resemble any other operating systems like uh, Windows or Mac OS. It's got its own thing going on here. It's got a dock here on the side and then in the background it's kind of uh, dark toned as far as the colors go. If you hit this activities that's when you actually get the dock here. It's got a little search here at the top once you hit the activities, but otherwise it has nothing. Uh, you can't even highlight in the background. I'd be surprised if you can even put anything on the desktop here, but uh, I guess we could try doing that real quick. Why don't we just uh, launch a terminal? There we go. And I'll just use, let's see. We'll go to the home directory live user on the desktop and we'll go ahead and make a file. They're not going to have them installed, so I'm just going to use vi, uh, new file, dot, whatever, text, testing, oh, testing, and I don't see a show up here in the background. The terminal looks fairly uncluttered, dark toned again. Looks very good. I don't mind it. Let's see what happens when you log in as a super user here. Uh, nothing. It looks exactly the same. I do like the darker tones and then you get the white on top of it so it makes things very easy to see. It kind of pops more than some of the other flavors of Linux or distros. Now Fedora OS is in independent distro that Red Hat owns and Red Hat is very known in the server space for its stability which is also one of the key features of Fedora Workstation. It's also known for it's also known for it being on the cutting edge of new development with packages. I mean we're up on Fedora 30 here so you can imagine how many releases have been before this at least 30. It has very good hardware support but it might be a little unfamiliar to people migrating from you know, Windows or Mac OS. And if you've made it this far, go ahead and take a moment to like the video. It would really help me out. Uh, we're gonna go through and just look at some basic apps here. So we got Firefox, Rhythmbox, the files. So files is going to be your file browser much like you would have in Win uh, Windows. Uh, as you look through here, you got your documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, the trash, the actual logical volume here, Anaconda, I'm not even sure what Anaconda is. Must be something with the uh, live system that gets mounted on, perhaps maybe for something for installing. I'll have to look that up later. Then you got different options up here if you want to zoom in. Let's see, you can't see it. It looks like 130, 133% is the most you can go in here. And then change the uh, sorting method, reload kind of search for things inside of your file browser and uh, create a new folder or even open it up in terminal if you want easy access to somewhere let's say you've gone deep in one folder and you don't care about typing it all into terminal changing directories you can just open it up in terminal and we should be in that folder and as you can see home live user public and that's where we're at the public folder and on the top right over here, you can see uh, some network settings. You can go into the battery life if you have that. If it's a desktop computer, you won't. Uh, the live system user or the current user settings, lock or log out, log in, I believe. Oh, yep. Cancel that. 
well, I might have messed that up. Anyways, we'll just live with that in the corner there. You can shut down from here and let's see. It's interesting that you can continue using things. Well, maybe you can't. I went ahead and cleared everything out because that was my mistake hitting that logout button. But uh, if we go ahead and look through a little bit here, um, you right click, you can change the background, which I don't really like the background that they have standard. So they got a lot of other cool ones here. I mean, here's a nice outside landscape. I think that looks a little better, but to each his own, of course. Um, kind of makes it pop a little bit more, in my opinion. And then uh, you have your display settings and the regular settings, which is interesting that they didn't just group these together. Uh, it's the same up here if you want to change your resolution. So let me just show you here. If you hit the settings, you don't necessarily get your display settings here in the left. But if you right click and you hit display settings, then your displays pop up and you get a few other uh, random settings. It looks like it's more like hardware versus uh, just the general software settings uh, of the operating system. So anyways, it's just something I found that was interesting. And then the night light here is kind of cool. You can set a time for the uh, screen be to become a cooler, warmer color. That apparently helps prevent eye strain and sleeplessness. Uh, you can go ahead and schedule something here if you wanted to. Um, and then if we go ahead and exit out of all that and go back to our activities, we sort of talked about these in the dock. You got, you know, some workspaces here on the right and then if you hit show applications you get the rest of your applications and you can scroll through or get your frequent one frequent ones here um, some cool ones to use are of course the standard Libra office which uh, really resembles a Microsoft office if you need uh, some kind of document editing uh, or PowerPoint or even uh, Excel uh, then Let's see what else we got here. Terminal, of course, is very important. And then the software app, so you can download different types of software. We'll go. You can also use the search up here to search for apps. So like Terminal, I type it in and boom, Terminal pops up. It'll also start auto, not auto filling, but it will kind of populate what it thinks is related to what you're typing in. Um, or if it finds something that's very similar, it'll go ahead and put it up here. So the text editor app begins with TE. Um, I'm not sure why we put LibreOffice here. I guess the writer at the end. TE's in uh, LibreOffice writer. And then settings, files, characters, and uh, the clock. If you want to set that, we'll exit out of here just by hitting escape. And that's just the rundown. It's very simple to navigate. Uh, you just kind of got to get used to it since it's a little different from Windows or Mac OS. Now to give it some ratings here. Fedora OS is a fairly popular Linux distribution and has been in the game for quite a while. Because of this, I'll give it a popularity rating of 8 out of 10. It's simple to use since there's not a lot of clutter. And it seems to focus on keeping the learning curve to a minimal when transferring from another operating system. You can also install other desktop environments, but it doesn't deploy one. some of the friendlier ones for, let's say, Windows users or even Mac users, uh, giving it a user friendliness rating of 7 out of 10. And since it's very stable and doesn't focus heavily on raw performance gains, that's more where the server version is uh, for. It gets a performance rating of 7 out of 10. And this distribution is owned and based off of Red Hat and its community of developers. It is cutting edge, so I'll give the features a rating a 8 out of 10. And finally, it seems to have a nice and decent sized community supporting it. And since it's one of the better known distributions, because it's made a name for itself over the years, I give it a sustainability rating of 8 out of 10. That gives it an overall score of 38 out of 50. So I hope you enjoyed the review and walkthrough of Fedora 30 Workstation. Let me know if you think the rating system is fair. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thank you for watching.